Like this one right here, this cost me a lot of money to figure this out. Until I actually had this framework, I would go knock on doors and I couldn't figure out why nobody would open the door. So number one, I couldn't get them to open the door. So that cost me money because I knock on doors and nobody answers. I went down to Vineyard. I think there's probably 500, 750 homes down there. I think I got maybe three cells out of the entire city of Vineyard. It was bad. I was probably close to buckling. And it wasn't until I started learning a little bit that I discovered, okay, there's a way to approach a door and to knock it. Once I figured this out, all of a sudden I started making money. I put in here some tools you can use, some tools that I use, and then you guys can, you guys can just try and toy with it and make your best out of it. But I'll show you the science behind doing this. So I broke it up into, what does it looks like, six sections. So door approach. When, when I go knock on doors, one of the things I do is, like typically, typically my buyer is, a, is typically men. Men seem to be the ones that buy solar. Now, I don't want to dissuade you from talking on doors and talking to women. I know that men typically are the ones that buy solar, but I've seen you guys as reps knock on doors with plenty of women, get appointments, and get deals. And so I don't want to dissuade you from it, but I can tell you collectively, on average, most of the time, it's men that buy solar. I just look, when I'm walking down the street, I'm trying to find a door, I just, if I see a husband outside of the house, I'm like, dude, there's a guy, that's a person right there. I don't have to knock on the door. I just walk up to him and start talking to him. But I try to identify them. And then one of the things that I do is, is I take and I look up you guys have seen the apps I've put in the in the training section with, I think it's parceled, and then there's Utah County app where it shows you the name of the homeowner. I use that because I seem it seems to me if I can approach somebody like a friend, I seem to do a better job because the first thing I know is, is they're gonna try to screen me out and I don't like getting screened out. And so if I come across as a friend or somebody that they think they know, they're gonna be very uncomfortable pretend like, dude, I don't know who you are. Why are you on my doorstep? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want to be screened out. And so I look up the homeowner's names. And then when I walk up to the house, I always look for things that I can compliment. Like I'm like, oh, that's a cool truck. Like, dude, those are cool rims. Like that's a cool tree. Something that you can tell that the homeowner's proud of. Now, you don't have to use this. I'm just showing you what I've used that's been effective. So I try to notice things about their house I can compliment. And then when I knock on the door, dun, 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 I step back from the door and I look in the opposite direction. So why do I look in the opposite direction? Makes them curious. Makes them curious, right? So what happens, Jaden, what happens when I knock on the door and there's the people right there and I'm like looking out like this? You're gonna wanna know who's there. You're gonna be like, I don't know who this is, but I can't see their face, so yeah. I'm gonna open the door and see. Yeah. So that's why you look in the opposite direction. But if they look through the peephole and they're like, I don't know who Jaden is. Don't answer. Yeah, they can answer. You get screened out. So like on door cams, those doorbell cams, I don't, I never hit them. I always <sighs> knock. I think, I think what happens on the door cam is you hit the door cam, then I think it probably sends the thing to their phone. Then they can look at your face. If I see a door cam, I go like this, boop. And I go walk back like this. I, I just don't want them to see my face. Like as far as they know, I could be missionaries, I could be the bishop, I could be, I could be their next door neighbor. Like they don't know who I am because they don't. It makes them curious. Curiosity is the king of getting people to try something. Then I can flush them out. Then this is where I this is where I'm gonna get screened out. Now you guys can try it however you want, but typically I always ask for the husband by first name. That way the wife's not, if I go, hey, is Mr. Morris here? And then they're gonna go, oh, you're a sales guy. Nah, he's taking a shower. I'm like, sure he is. Yeah, he's not here, he's, he's, uh, he's at the store. Sure he is. Like, because I don't like those excuses, I borrowed this from Tony Robbins. I just greet him like a friend. I'm like, hey, is Mike here? And when they, when they like, when they like, oh, okay, so-and-so knows them, therefore they're a friend. Then I usually get past the gatekeeper and then when they come to the door, I usually greet them by name. Like, obviously, I'm gonna walk up to the door. They're, they're not gonna know who I am, but I'm trying to figure out how to, how to get them engaged and not immediately scream me out. They're like, because if they come to the door, I'm like, yeah, I'm the solar guy. They're like, dude, you guys keep knocking on my door. <laughs> like, I don't like that. And so I, I call them by name so that they're less likely to do it. And then I just go into a type of rapport building. Okay, so now that you're talking to the, the customer, now what do you say? And so right here, I think there's some poetic license. So first thing I want you, it's helpful to understand is people buy from friends. And so when you came and knocked doors with Britt and I, we spend time turning those suckers into friends or those, those, those prospects into friends because they're gonna have a hard time saying no if they like us. I mean, I just know it's how it works. And so some tools that help you is there's skips inside, there's scripts, I mean, inside the training. So you can use those scripts. So Jaden's is in there. Isaacs is in there. We need to get Tyson's in there. It'll be helpful as you, you go out and you start mentoring and coaching. You're like, well, my script's in there. You can try that, try any of these other ones. But you can use the script. And then I put in here, 
something that I like to do a lot. Like when we're when I get into a conversation, you do a script, but I, I I take time and ask people things that I know will cause the other person to engage. If I say where are you from, everybody's got a backstory. Everybody can tell you where they came from. They're gonna tell you exactly exactly what they want you to know about them. Then I can say, hey, what brought you here? Like, you know, what brought you to Elkridge or whatever? How do you like it? What kind of work do you do? People like talking about their work. And then some tools that I use to get into rapport is mirror and matching. I like to tell people that I'm the local solar guy. It's a little disarming. I don't, I think a lot of times people would work, would rather work with locals than big box chain brands. And then one of the things that I like to do is, is I, on my phone, one of the things I've, I've been, like with Brit, we're going into these neighborhoods where nobody's got solar. Like the, the last guy that just bought from us is probably 76. What he really bought from us was, was security. Like if we didn't have batteries, I'm not totally convinced that he would have bought. I think batteries is what allowed him to buy. So we sold him security. But what was helpful, just understanding your market. So when, when they, uh, they start talking about, you know, they think they're not interested in solar. And I'm like, oh, you know, did you know our rates went up 96%? And then I tell them a story. And then I tell them how we're shutting down coal-fired plants. And then I show them this graph right here. And I'm like, two-thirds of the United States doesn't have power now. And so then they start kind of looping through it. I have other slides on here where Britt and I knocked on one door Saturday. After we closed our deal, we went and knocked on one door because we had time left. The guy already had people who wanted to talk to him about solar. They weren't interested. So we, I literally looped into why the rates went up, what's going on in the marketplace. I said, they just lost their nuclear power plant, flushed a decade out the door. Then I showed them the profit and loss for the utility company. I'm like, see how they're losing money right here? And then after he kind of got that, I'm like, rate increases are not done. He's like, he didn't think it would save him much. So then I actually pulled up another slide and I said, well, like I, I showed him like, here's somebody's bill now and I times, times it by, so your current average bill times 12 months times 30 years. I said, so if they never raise prices again, this is what it's gonna come out to. And I said, so solar is like 20 grand. If they never raise the bill again, it's 60 grand. And he's like, what? I'm like, so you can see it's a third the price. And then I showed him the, the, the rate increases the calculations on rate increases. And I'm like, it's like 10 cents on the dollar, maybe even five cents on the dollar, depending on how it plays out. And the guy's like, huh? I'm like, yeah, you are talking, we're not talking cents, we're talking hundreds of thousands. And the guy's like, what? And then he finally is like, okay, I'll meet with you guys. There you go, you, you find a way to hook them. What, what's cool about if you, as you start learning those stories, in the beginning, what you're probably doing is just trying to turn over the turd, see if there's a diamond. But as you become better at it, you can get more people interested that weren't. So. Objections. Just initially what I do is I just ag agree with people. I agree with them. I don't fight people. You tell me, you tell me I'm ugly. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know what I did to make that better is I started wearing a hat. I don't fight with them. I just agree with them. And then I just use this thing. Things changed. And then I, I kind of show them what changed. And then I move into his like, does that make sense? You see what I mean? And then I like to show this, like, you see what I mean? Like, I don't know what to do to fix it. They need power and we just lost that's that's the power 90,000 homes and it just went up in smoke now what but then I say does that make sense what it is it's a trial close like when, think of it a, think of a turkey on Thanksgiving right who wants to eat a raw turkey nobody in here wants raw turkey right anybody want salmonella nobody wants salmonella so you put jab a thermostat into it and you you open up the thing you look at it, and it's like oh it's not done yet oh it's not done yet you open it up, ah, it's done. Trial closes is how you, you ask a question like, it's kind of fun when I'm in here with Tyson and I see this look on his face, I'm like, he's hung up on something. Tyson's like, well, how do you know that? I'm like, you got the look in your face, bro. Like, I know that I need to pause because you're, I'm going this way and you're back here. And so what I do is I, 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 I go through something. I'm like, hey, Jaden, does that make sense? You see what I mean? Are you, are you following this? See, and as you say that, and I can see that you're not confused, I'm like, okay, cool, then I can move on. But it helps me identify where somebody's lost, that they're understanding it, and then we can move on. And it gets them to say yes. Yes, 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 yes. I need 10,000 yeses. Then when I say, hey, you wanna buy the they're like, hey man, I've already been saying yes for the last hour. Sure, let's do it. Then I do the, I do the pullback. This is probably, if you don't have a pullback in what you're doing, you're gonna probably fail. The pullback is, is I need to make a slide about commission breath. Um, I call it commission breath because somebody's like, buy my solar, buy my solar, buy my solar. And they're like, you stink, you stink, you stink. Stop talking about this. Because people have a habit of only talking about what they want. And so what you do is you're like, you know what, I'll run the numbers, see if it benefits you, and then you can decide if it's worth it. 
and then I just say, would that be fair? That way it doesn't look like I'm trying to shove junk on them that they don't want. And I pull back, when I, when I say, would that be fair? I'll just run numbers and then you decide if you want it. I'll even straight up tell people, I don't care if you get it. You get it, cool, if you don't, you know. I'm like, it doesn't work for everybody. If it works for you, cool, if it doesn't, it doesn't. I can at least show you the numbers and you can decide. I, I say it like that all the time. I say, would that be fair? And then they're like, yeah, that would be fair. Okay, cool. You don't have a pullback, you're probably not gonna get an appointment. It's actually probably that critical. On appointments, this right here will probably help you right here. When I set an appointment after they do this, and they, they, they get interested. I, I'm probably pretty strong on how I set appointments. I'm not, I don't really pussyfoot around it. I'm like, cool, let's see, today's Monday. Would Wednesday or Thursday be better for you and your wife? And then they're like, no, I think, I think and if it's not good, they're like, no, neither one of those days are good. Okay, cool, uh, how about Saturday? Does Saturday work? And I'm like, so Saturday at 10, 10 or one. So I try to give them options. I don't give them an option not to do it. I give them option A, option B, option A, option B. And then after they say option, like, so after they say, okay, Saturday at 10 would work, it's like, cool. So will you and your wife both be here? I'm like, I confirm, like, you and your wife both can be here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gentle, but I'm very clear in this phase of my appointment setting. I'm like, I'm clear. Okay, Saturday at 10, cool. I'll put it down like this, and then I, then I put it on my calendar. Because half the battle is getting a belly button at the appointment so you can close a deal. And because I know that that's a big deal, Sometimes I'll even just say what, I'll even put it on them sometimes. I'm like, what is the best day of the week? The most convenient time for you when you guys are around? Because some people are hard to get, right? And they're gonna forget. So if you, and all I'm really saying is if you accidentally forget, but you're here anyways, when is that? Because I'm gonna show up anyways. Like I already know people are gonna forget. So I try to, I try to be very specific about times that are convenient for them so that I have a chance at it. And after they do that, boom, tie it down, put it in my appointment and close it.